This is the introductory video for the Grading Spectrometer Lab. So just a few things to note first. The manufacturer recommends that you don't leave these lamps turned on all the time. So you would turn it on for about 30 seconds, take some data, and then turn it off until you're ready to take your next bit of data. Another thing to be wary of is that these are very high voltage, so keep your fingers away from the sockets. Another thing to be aware of is that there's these little leveling screws on the black table in the center of the spectrometer and you should never touch those because it screws up the spectrometer in a way that's not easily fixed. So basically just never touch these. And finally, before you begin, you're going to need to focus the telescope and the collimator just like you did for the PRISM spectrometer lab. So if you don't remember how you did that, maybe go back and review the video. So now we want to attach our diffraction grating to the spectrometer. To do that, you've been given a little bracket and also some posts which are going to hold it to this black table in the center of the spectrometer. There's a variety of ways in which you could put this on, but the way that we do want you to put it on is such that the diffraction grating is going to go along this center line here. And if you look at the little holder, it's got these two little leather clips. That's where the diffraction grating is going to go. So that means that you should have this face along this center line and be using these two holes. So I'll attach my bracket now. And when you're done, you can then slide your diffraction grating into the little leather tabs. The next thing that you're going to want to do is orient your diffraction grating so it's exactly 90 degrees to the collimator. Now this already is approximately 90 degrees to the collimator, but we want to get it exactly 90 degrees, and there's a bit of a process for doing that. So here's how you do it. You first swing your telescope over so that it's aligned with the collimator, and you look for the central image. And when you find it, you want to put your crosshairs right on it. Then you lock the spectrometer table so that this can't move. The telescope is still free for now. The next thing you want to do is take your reading here, find out exactly what it is, and then add or subtract 90 degrees from this reading and move your telescope to that location. So you're now 90 degrees this way, exactly. When you get to that 90 degree location, then you lock your telescope in place. And now you're going to unlock the table and you're going to do something which might seem a little weird at first, and that is you're going to orient the diffraction grating at 45 degrees relative to the collimator. And the way in which you judge that is you should be looking through the telescope while you're doing this, while you're swiveling the table, and you're looking for the reflection of the central image off the front face of your diffraction grating. In other words, light's going to come down here through the collimator, it's going to bounce off the front of your diffraction grating, come down the telescope, and you want to adjust this table until you see that reflection right at your crosshairs. So you do that as carefully as you can, put the reflection right on your crosshairs, and then you want to again take a reading here, and you're going to either add or subtract 45 degrees, and adjust the whole table back so that the diffraction grating is now exactly at 90 degrees to the collimator. So right now, if you've done things correctly, it's exactly at 45 degrees to the collimator, so you just add or subtract 45 degrees here to make it exactly 90 degrees. And you set your diffraction grating exactly how it's supposed to be, and then you lock your table one last time, and you're going to change that again for the rest of the experiment. The telescope, however, will be moving around freely. And by the way, if you're having trouble with that 45 degree thing, you can substitute in a mirror instead of your diffraction grating. But if possible, it is better to use the diffraction grating because these aren't necessarily the same thickness. So now you're ready to take data. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go find your central image, put your crosshairs right on it, and take a reading here. Because the table doesn't move, you'll only need to take the central image's reading once. It won't change. Next, you're going to go looking for your first order spectral lines. So that means you can go to either side of the central image and you'll start seeing bright spectral lines for the helium gas discharge. If you keep going, you'll see second order lines, which is just all the same spectral lines but dimmer. We're not interested in those, so just stick to the six bright lines that you saw in this PRISM spectroscopy lab. So you go find your first line, say it's a blue one, and you want to put your crosshairs right on it and take a reading. And then you swing over to the opposite side, find that same color of line, again put your crosshairs on it and take a reading. 
And so there's going to be two angles that you get out of this. It'll be one minus the other to get the angle on one side of the central image, and one minus the other to get the angle on the other side. Those two angles should agree with an uncertainty. If they don't, it means your diffraction grading is not well aligned and you should stop, go and fix that, and then start retaking your data. But assuming the angle on this side and on this side of the central image are the same, then you would average them together and that's the angle that you're going to use later in your calculations to get the diffraction grading spacing. Once you've done that for one line, you go do it for all the others. So you do it for six lines in total on both sides of the central image. And by the way, if you're finding that your spectral lines seem to be falling off the top or the bottom of your view, just adjust the diffraction grading by tilting it slightly. So you just rock it back and forth. Don't adjust these leveling screws because that will actually mess up the spectrometer enough you can't use it anymore. So don't touch these, just grab the diffraction grading itself and twist. So once you've got all your average angles, plus the known wavelengths for helium gas from the prism spectroscopy lab, then you can calculate a value of D for each of those spectral lines. We're only using one grading, so the fact that you're going to have six different D values doesn't change the fact that all of them should agree. So once you've got all six of those values, average them together, and that's the D value you're going to use in the second part of the experiment. Now in the first part of this experiment, to find D, you were using helium gas. So you've got your light source right here, and this was the helium gas tube. You're going to have to change this to a mystery gas now. So first of all, make sure that this guy is turned off because these are actually very high voltage, and it's a little cooler to grab the glass here. It gets quite hot here. So just be careful, and you press this down against the spring, and then you can remove it. And then you grab your mystery gas tube and record the number that's on there. So this is number six, and just press against the spring, put it in there, and then it's ready to go back at the end of your collimator where it was. So the first thing you're going to do after you've recorded your tube number for the mystery gas is you want to describe the entire spectrum in words. So swing your telescope back and forth, have a look at the spectrum, describe it, and then you're going to choose three to six lines that you think will allow you to identify that gas. Because the spectrum that a gas emits is unique to that gas, so you can use it as a fingerprint to identify your gas. And that's what you're going to do. So choose three to six lines. Generally speaking, you want to choose the brightest lines. And you're going to take measurements off of them and calculate the wavelengths of all those lines that you've chosen. Now some gases will only have three lines. Some of them will have 20 lines. Some of them will have dim lines as well as bright ones. I recommend you choose the brightest ones. If you've got a lot of lines, then go looking for lines where there's only a few of that color. So for example, if you've got a zillion red and orange lines, but just two green lines, make sure the two green ones are two that you use for your measurements. So you take measurements off of three to six lines. You'll use the D value you got previously with the helium gas, and you'll calculate the wavelength of your three to six selected spectral lines. Once you've got those wavelengths, then you're going to compare them to the known spectra for various gases, and you're going to identify which gas you think is in your tube. Now, because there's a bit of uncertainty in your measurements, you may not get perfect matches, but there's other clues as well, like whether or not your spectrum happened to look like the one for a particular gas. So you can use any criteria you want. The wavelengths are probably your best clue, and you figure out what gas you think was in your tube, and explain your reasoning to your lab instructor.